For tapes, CDs, DVDs, to our publication, Voices from His Excellent Glory, Declaring the Kingdom, write P.O. Box 21516, Hot Springs, Arkansas, Zip 71903. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are many free audio files there. This is the 2016 Midwinter Camp Meeting being held at Lake Hamilton Bible Camp in Hot Springs National Park, Arkansas. Saturday morning, December the 31st, 2016, Jerry McGee is the speaker of the morning teaching on financial problems. This is now the conclusion of this message from Part A. I think not in that. Oh, dear God, for him. <laughs> We weren't saved then. I mean, I wasn't saved. I didn't get saved till I was 25 years old. I was hoping you would get. <laughs> she was hoping I'd get saved. Because I'm the one that paid the brother. <laughs> I used to, I used to, y'all are going to think I'm terrible. I used to burn the tails off the scorpions and shake. <laughs> now, now we deal with serpents and scorpions. Right? All the terrible ones. I didn't even apologize to her for that. She laughed, so I thought it wouldn't bother her because she was laughing. <laughs> anyway, thank the Lord. He knows what we need. The 29th verse. Talking when we should be working. I used to have a ministry farm, and I'd try to get these people that had come out of that. I'd, they came from everywhere. They were a lot of the homeless people, wherever. They came from everywhere. And, uh, I would, I would give them a job to do, and I'd go out there, all they, were, all they were doing was talking. It says, Proverbs 14, verse 23 says, In all labor there's profit, but mere talk leads to property. So are you a talker instead of a worker? If, if you've got an employer and you're a talker, let me tell you, you're not going to last very long. Some people say, well, I got fired because I'm a Christian. Let me tell you something. Your, your boss don't care if you're a Christian. As long as you do a good job, he'd never fire you. Unless you're up in his face all the time. Okay, the 30th reason is swearing to the Lord and swearing to false gods. And Zechariah, on Zephaniah, is speaking of Milcom, who is a false god. It says, moreover, the wet, moreover, their wealth will become plunder and their houses desolate. And they will build houses but not live in, not inhabit them and plant vineyards and not drink the, the fruit drink the wine. The 31st reason is being greedy and selfish. Proverbs 22 verse 9 says, He who is generous will be blessed, for he gives some of his food to the poor. The 32nd reason is withholding what is just due. In other words, if you have something to bless somebody and you withhold it, there's a curse. Proverbs 11 verse 24 says, there's one who scatters and yet increases the more, and there's one who withholds what is justly due, and it results only in loss. The 33rd re- reason is, bringing, is bearing your talent. You know, Jesus gives a parable of a man who, had, who went on a journey, and he gave uh, uh, one, of, one of his servants, he gave five talents, the other one he gave two talents, and the other one he gave one talent. The one who had... Uh, been given five talents, gave him five more for ten. The one that had two talents gave him two more for four. And the one who did only had one talent, this is what he said, I saw you as a harsh, stiff, stern man, reaping where you didn't sow and gathering where you scattered no seed. And this is what God said to him in Matthew 25, verse 26. But his master answered and said to him, You wicked, lazy slave. You, you knew that I reap where I do not sow, and I gather where I scatter no seed. And he goes on to say, depart from me. I didn't, I, in fact, I left that scripture, but it has to do with, um, he assigns him to a place where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth because he buried the talent God gave him. The 34th reason is laziness and indolence. Proverbs 19, verse 15, laziness casts a man into deep sleep, and an idle man will suffer hunger. So, if you're a lazy person, you're going to suffer hunger. You know, so many times people say, you know, you know, I'm waiting for God to do this, and I'm waiting for God to do that, and it's just been, I've just been too lazy to work. The 38th reason is robbing God of the tithe. And the tithe is 10%, and of course you, 
should want to give more than the tithe. You know, remember the Pharisee and the publican, or the, the, not the Pharisee and the publican, this lady that gave all she had, and the Pharisee who gave a little. And God honored the one who gave a little more than the one who had an abundance to give. Malachi 3 verse 8 says, Will a man rob God for you're robbing me? But you say, How I have I robbed you? And he says, In tithes and offerings. So offerings are above the 10%. The 39th reason, 40th reason, is not honoring the Lord from your wealth. Proverbs 3, 9 through 10 says, Honor the Lord from your wealth and from the first fruit of your produce, so that your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats won't be overflowing with new wine. The 41st reason is uh, bringing, um, bringing a cursed thing into your house. Deuteronomy 4, verse 15 says, So watch yourself carefully, since you did not see any, since you did not see any from the day the Lord your God spoke to you at Horeb, from the midst of the fire, so that you do not act corruptly and make for yourself a graven image for yourself in the form of any figure, in the likeness of an animal, or a female, male or female, the likeness of an animal that is on the earth, the likeness of any winged bird or a bird that flies to the sky, the likeness of anything that creeps on the ground, the likeness of any fish or anything that is below the earth. And beware that you lift up your eyes to heaven and see the sun and the moon and the stars and the host of heaven and be drawn away to worship them. You know, there's a, there is a false prophet in Texas that they entertain the host of heaven. That's dangerous. And draw away and worship them and serve them, those which the Lord your God has allot, allotted to all the peoples under the whole heaven. But the Lord has taken you and brought you out of the fiery iron furnace from Egypt to be a people for his own possession as today. <coughs> so watch yourself that you do not forget the covenant of your God. So if you do those things, you're for your breaking covenant, which he made with you, and made for yourself graven images in the form of anything uh, or against anything which the Lord your God has commanded you. For the Lord your God is a consuming fire, a jealous God. And, and Deuteronomy 7.25 says, The graven images of their gods are to burn with fire. You shall not desire the gold or silver that's on them, nor take it for yourselves, lest you be ensnared by it, for it is an accursed thing, an abomination to the Lord your God. Neither shall you bring an abomination into your house, lest you become an accursed thing like it. But you shall surely detest it and abhor it, for it is an accursed thing. So many of us have to do a house cleaning. Um, when in doubt, throw it out. That's, that's been what I kind of lived by. And I can tell you there's a lot of peace in my house. My, when my oldest son was in high school, he was class favorite every year. And he had all these little uh, uh, class favorite trophies. And my, my husband had a great big wooden elephant that was about this big on the, the fireplace. And we were having so many problems, in my opinion, in the house that when they left one night to go to a ball game or something, when they came back, I had had a bonfire. <laughs> my husband said, that elephant, my mother gave me that elephant. I said, well, it's gone now. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so this is not to put you under any kind of a law, but what I say is, Lord, if I'm supposed to have it, give me total peace. I'm not, if I'm not supposed to have it, uh, take away my peace. The 42nd reason, so don't bring an accursed thing in your house. Even these little stuffed animals. I know I have a friend that one night she heard her daughter in the bedroom saying, Come here, come here. Her, her, daughter, had, her, her daughter had a great big teddy bear in the corner. And that teddy bear, there was a spirit that was speaking through that teddy bear. And she was saying, Come here, come here. And needless to say, she got rid of it. So, uh, these little things, you know, the Satanists are smarter than we are. They make things and put curses on it. Those Cabbage Patch dolls that were years ago, each of them had a Hindu name. And you can go, th you can walk through the, the toy department at Walmart during Christmas and you can feel the demonic oppression coming from those demonic toys. If it looks evil, get rid of it. Okay, the, part, the, the next thing is word cursing. 
yourself and others. You speak curses on people. The Bible says you speak a curse, it's going to come back on you. So let that be a warning to us that we better be speaking life over people and not cursing because whatever we curse is going to come back on us. More, the same thing. I have a, the scripture says death and life are in the power of the tongue. My husband used to say I'm so poor I can't pay attention. Is that cursing? Cursing your finances? Uh, Proverbs says, He who guards his mouth guards his soul from troubles. Jesus said, You're going to have what you say, good or bad, evil or good. If you believe what you say, you're going to have it. Because what's in the heart comes out the mouth. And I've been trying to correct my conversation for the last few years since I've really seen how I've spoken a lot of death over myself. But we're so, all of us are in such a habit of, sitting, of speaking negative. If we keep saying the same thing, we need to ask God, if it's coming from our heart, how did they get there, Lord? <laughs> or if it's up in our thought life, where did this come from? And deal with it. Um, so, uh, speaking curses over ourselves, what we do is we plant that thing to come up as an evil, uh, 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 an evil root or a thorn or a thistle coming up in our spiritual garden. The next thing is being under a curse. Galatians 5 18 says, But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, self-control. Against us there is no law. So if there is no law when my life produces the fruit of the Spirit, you could say there is a law when my life is not producing love, joy, peace. And the only way, I can, the only way my life can produce love, joy, peace is for me to deny myself, take up my cross, and follow the Lord. As I die to myself... The life of Jesus can come forth. His personality is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, self control. That's not my personality. My personality is that of the flesh in Galatians 5.19. So if I'm not walking in the Spirit through denying myself, I come back under the law, and the demons are the executors of God's law. I break God's law, and the demons are the policemen. 1 Timothy 8, 1, 9 through 10 says, Realizing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for those who are lawless and rebellious, for the ungodly and sinners, for uh, the unholy and profane, for those who kill their mothers and fathers, and of course we can kill them with words, for murderers and sexually immoral people and homosexuals and kidnappers and liars and perjurers, and whatever else is contrary to sound teaching, so that's any sin. Galatians 3.10 says, For as many as are the works of the law are under a curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who does not abide by all things written in this book of the law to perform them. And so Jesus became a curse for us at Calvary. It's like he deposited, it would be like somebody deposited a million dollars in your bank account. If you don't write a check on it, it does you no good. And so, Jesus gave us more than that. He became a curse for us at Calvary, but we have to appropriate what he did to get ourselves from out from under the curse. You know, the break of generational curse, it's like somebody's got to stand up in your bloodline and take accountability for what's come down the bloodline. Lord, I take it. The scripture says, Levi paid tithes when he was in the loins of his father, and his father was Abraham. I believe it was his grandfather. If he paid tithes, which is a good thing, when he was in the loins of his father, then, then what's that to say about the bad things that happen when we're in the loins of our forefathers? So to break the curse, I have to say, Lord, I recognize this perversion, this adultery, this fornication, this Satan worship, or whatever it is that's coming down my bloodline. And Lord, I'm going to be the one that's going to stand up in my bloodline, and I'm going to take accountability for this and put it under the blood of Jesus and say, goes no further on my children. And so for, for me to break a curse, I have to, I have to take a, I have to appropriate what Jesus did at Calvary. And thank God he became a curse for me. Proverbs 3, 33 says, The curse of the Lord is upon the house of the wicked, but he blesses the dwelling of the righteous. Malachi 3, 8 says, Will a man rob God? Yet you're robbing me. But you say, How have I robbed thee in tithes and offerings? You are cursed with a, it says in Malachi 3, verse 9 and 10. You are cursed with a curse, for you're robbing me, the whole nation of you, but bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, so that it may be food in my house. And test me now, 
Thus says the Lord, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour out for you a blessing until it overflows. Then, God says, I'll rebuke the devourer for you so that he may not destroy the fruits of the ground, nor nor your vine in the field, nor your vine in the field cast it cast off its grapes, says the Lord of hosts. And the nations will call you blessed, for you shall be a delightful land. And this is your land. First first Corinthians three nine says you're building your house in the field. Mark four, Luke eight, Matthew thirteen says your soil. Genesis says your earth or dust. He says that you, you shall be a delightful land, says the Lord your of hosts. And so blessing and cursing contrasted. Okay, Deuteronomy 28, 1 through uh, 19 says, Now it shall come about, if you will diligently obey the Lord your God, and be careful to do all His commandments for which I command you this day, the Lord will set you high above the nations of the earth, and these blessings shall come on you and overtake you. They're going to run you down. It says, if, if, if you will obey the Lord your God, blessed shall you be in the city, and blessed shall you be in the country. Blessed shall be the offspring of your body, and the produce of your ground, and the offspring of your beast, and the young of your flock. Blessed shall you be your basket and your kneading bowl. Now you say, well, I don't have a flock, and I don't have uh, cattle and beasts, but it it just means your stuff's going to get blessed. Blessed shall you be when you're in the... (coughs) When you come in, and blessed shall you be when you go out. The Lord will cause your the Lord will cause your enemies. And Paul said, "Your enemies aren't flesh and blood; they're principalities and powers." I shall. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise up against you to be defeated before you. They will come against you one way, and they're going to run seven. They're going to have to flee seven ways. The Lord will command a blessing upon you and your barns and all that you set your hand to do, and you'll be blessed in the land which the Lord your God has given you. And the Lord will make you abound in prosperity, in the offspring of your body, in the offspring of your beast, and in the produce of your ground, and in your land which the Lord your God swore to your fathers to give you. The Lord will open up for you his good storehouse the heavens and give rain to you in its season. And to all, and will bless all the work of your hand, hands, and you shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. You see how credit cards are a curse. We all have them, or most of us have them, but they're a curse. If you don't pay them off every month, you're in trouble. I've been in that trap. But God wants to get you out of it. Hallelujah. Amen. Ask Him, and He'll do, He will do it. The Lord shall make. Make you the head and not the tail. Have you been the tail instead of the head? God says he's going to make you the head instead of the tail. And you only shall be above and not be underneath. If, if, if you will listen to the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day, to observe them carefully. But it shall come about, if you will not obey the Lord your God, to to observe all of his commandments and his statutes, which I which I charge you today that all these curses will come on you and overtake you. Cursed shall you be in the city and cursed shall you be in the blessed, in the country. Cursed shall be the, your basket and your kneading bowl. Cursed shall be the offspring of your body and the produce of your ground, the increase of your herd and the young of your flock. You see, all of us are a product of, of the generational iniquities of the forefathers. Good things and bad things can come down. Praise God that blessings come down from our forefathers too. But if we're under the curse, we can be under the curse because of our forefathers. Curse shall you be in the city and curse shall you be when you go out. Your ox shall be, get, be slaughtered from before your eyes, but you shall not eat of it. Your donkey shall be torn away from you. And again, most of us don't have a donkey. But it's a picture of what you have. And it shall not be restored to you. Your sheep shall be given to your enemies. And you'll have none to save you because you're not in covenant with the Lord. Get in covenant with the Lord and He will be the one that saves you. 28 verse 33 says, A people you do not know shall eat up the produce of your ground and, and all your labors 
and you'll be nothing but a pressed and crushed continually. You shall bring out much seed to the field, but gather in little, for the locusts shall consume it. You shall plant and cultivate vineyards, but you shall not drink of the wine or gather the grapes, for the worms shall devour them. You shall have olive trees throughout your territory, but you shall not anoint yourself with oil, for your olives will drop off. You shall, he shall lend to you, but you shall not lend to him. He shall be the head, and you shall be the tail. There's another one that says, You'll only be oppressed and crushed continually with none to save you. And so we're to seek God for the cause of the things that have gone on in our life. Seek God for the cause of the problems. Proverbs 26, 2 says, Like a sparrow in its splitting, like a swallow in its flying, so a curse without a cause cannot lie. So all those things that we named in the latter part of this were curses, but there has to be a cause for that to happen. And so whatever you're going through, ask God for the cause and He'll show it to you because He wants to redeem your life. He wants to restore your life. He wants the latter years of your life to be greater than the former years. And I thank God for deliverance. I want to get more deliverance tomorrow and more the next day and more the next day. And when I get to heaven, I'm going to be squeaky clean. Amen. Because we've got so much stuff. If we saw everything was wrong with us, we'd collapse. We could not take it. I think Nikki said that the first night. We've, we're all a work in progress. We've all got stuff we have to deal with. We all have issues. We all have things we have to overcome. But praise God. It says in Second Peter that he's given us all things pertaining to life and godliness. He's given us everything we need to overcome. He's the overcomer. I like to tell people, just stay on the potter's wheel. If you fall off, get back on. If you fall off, confess your sin, get back on. Stay yielded to God and the potter will finish what he created you for. He didn't put you here for nothing. He knew exactly when you were born what he had for you to do on this earth. Don't waste your sorrows. Don't waste your life. Live every day like... like. And this is something since Jake was killed. Is, you, don't, you, don't, you don't know when you're not, not going to be here tomorrow. And even though you don't find pain, let First John 1, 9 be your theme verse. <laughs> Confess your sin every day. Don't let the sun go down on your anger. The last thing you tell God, get your heart right before you ever go to bed at night. Better do it by the minute you sin. I, I try to do it the minute I sin because I can't stand the way I feel until I confess my sins. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil and expect God to bless you. Proverbs 1, 12, verse 13 says, Praise the Lord. How blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who greatly delights in his commandments. Do you greatly delight in his commandments? His descendants will be mighty upon the earth, for the generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches and honor are in his house, and his righteousness endures forever. So stand up, if you will, and ask the Lord to show you what you need to repent of if you haven't already seen a bunch of stuff. Lord, I ask you to search my heart, test my thoughts, let me know the truth that sets me free. Show me anything I've ever stolen. Show me anything that I've done that would block my finances. And then when you threw repentance, sit down and then I'll lead you some more and we'll have a group deliverance. Lord, I ask for the truth. Pray with me. Lord, I ask for the truth that sets me free. Lord, in Jesus' name, forgive me for fraud. Forgive me for neglecting discipline. Not going to you and asking you what the problem is. And letting you correct me. Forgive me for lack of diligence. Forgive me for foolishness. God, forgive me for wearing myself to gain wealth. Forgive me, Lord, for uh, being a heavy drinker, drug addict, glutton. I forgive my forefathers for that. I renounce the spirit of alcoholism and drug addiction that's passed down on my bloodline on me. In the name of Jesus, forgive me for being a slugger, lazy, indolent, following empty pursuits. God, forgive me for working with a negligent hand, not being gracious to the poor. Forgive me for judging the poor. Forgive me for thinking I'd never be like this. Forgive me for not honoring my mother and father, for judging them for being poor, for judging them for being greedy. Forgive me for judging them. God, forgive me for uh, being bitter toward them because they worked all the time to make money. I forgive them that they wouldn't work. 
I forgive him for poverty. I forgive him for always saying no. I forgive him for being greedy and selfish and not ever helping me or doing anything for me. Forgive me for loving pleasure. God, forgive me for uh, oppressing the poor to make myself rich. God, forgive me for um, increasing my wealth by usury, charging brother Christian's interest. Uh, forgive me for theft, for anything I've ever stolen, which was causing me to have to have repay seven times over and all the sudden of my house. Forgive me for, for uh, slandering people. Forgive me for uh, occult involvement. I renounce Freemasonry. I renounce every cult. Uh, forgive me for New Age. Forgive me for horoscopes, astronomy, astrology. Forgive me for my involvement with occult things, with horror movies. God, for, forgive me for um, false religions, cults. I deny and re- I renounce every doctrine or anything I've ever been in that denies the blood atonement of Jesus Christ and the deity of Jesus Christ. I renounce. Also, I break all satanic vows and covenants. I break covenants to give my money to the Freemasons in the name of Jesus. Forgive me for idolatry. Forgive me for imposing heavy rent on the poor, and I forgive anybody that mistreated my poor forefathers and imposed heavy rent on them. Uh, I forgive every person who shut uh, their ears to the cry of my poor forefathers. I forgive me for sowing sparingly, which is causing me to reap sparingly. Forgive me for not being a bountiful sower. Forgive me for not realizing that the one seed I sow is going to produce a plant with lots of fruit. Forgive me for robbing you of tithes and offerings, breaking covenant with you, being a covenant breaker. Lord, I present my body to you as a living sacrifice. I choose to deny myself, take up my cross, and follow you. Y'all be praying. Lord, forgive me for not fearing you and turning away from evil. Forgive me for not having any fear of God. I ask you to increase my fear of God. Forgive me for not loving you and walking in wisdom. Uh, God, forgive me for... Uh, I forgive my forefathers who were unrighteous, who left me a wicked inheritance instead of a good inheritance. <coughs> forgive me for having an evil eye, hastening after wealth, keeping company with prostitutes and spiritual harlots. Forgive me for being a spiritual adulterer, praying a prayer to receive you, and then my heart going after other lovers. I've been a spiritual adulterer. Forgive me, Lord. Uh, God, forgive me for... Um, the getting of treasure by a lying tongue, manipulating my parents, giving somebody a poor pity party, uh, pretending I was having a pity party or whatever uh, to manipulate people for money. Um, forgive me for talking when I should be working. Uh, forgive me for swearing to the Lord and swearing to false gods and wanting a door to open when I haven't been willing to obey your word. Forgive me for being greedy and selfish withholding what is justly due. Forgive me for bearing my talents. Lord, you've given me many talents and I've buried them. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me for seeing you as harsh, stiff, and stern, leaving where you didn't sow and gathering where you scattered no seed. Forgive me for robbing you of my tithe and offerings. Forgive me for not honoring you with my wealth, what I have. Forgive me for, not bring, forgive me for bringing a cursed thing into my house. That's brought me under the curse. Forgive me for bringing an abomination into my house. Forgive me for not watching myself. Forgive me for graven images and not being willing to burn them with fire. Forgive me for wanting the gold and silver that's on them. Forgive me for cursing myself and cursing others. Forgive me for speaking death with my mouth, not guarding my mouth. Lord, I've been having what I've been saying, and that's not good. Will you please change my conversation and Jerry's too while you're at it, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Forgive me for being under a curse, Lord, for walking under the law. For not, forgive me for not being willing to deny myself so my life could produce the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, self-control. Lord, forgive me for being lawless. Forgive me for being rebellious. Forgive me for being a murderer. Forgive me for uh, being unholy and profane. Forgive me for killing my mother and father physically and even with words. 
Forgive me for sexual immorality, murder, homosexuality, kidnapping, lying. Forgive me for perjury. God, forgive me in the name of Jesus for uh, idolatry, for sin against you. Forgive me for disobedience to your voice and your commandments in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I forgive my forefathers for these same things that I just confessed. I forgive them for committing these sins. I take accountability for whatever happened to me and the loins of my forefathers. Everybody pray. And I ask you to start with Adam and Eve and let your cleansing blood flow down through my bloodline, washing away any ground Satan's had in my life for the things I've confessed. Lord, I stand up in my bloodline and I say this. I put that all of these things under the blood of Jesus and I say it goes no further on my children in the name of Jesus. Praise you, mighty God. Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Now, every spirit of poverty, come out. Every spirit of failure, defeat, come out. Anger, unforgiveness, bitterness, selfishness, greediness, come out. All spirits blocking deliverance, come out now in Jesus' name. I break your power in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, I cast out every spirit of fear, fear of failure, fear of being broke, fear of not paying your bills, fear of not having uh, money, fear of not having food. Come out now. In Jesus' name, all spirits that have blocked their finances, come out. All spirits of laziness and indolence, you come out now. All spirits of greed, come out now. In Jesus' name, I break your power. All spirits of sexual immorality, all spirits of lying, come out now in Jesus' name. I break your power in the mighty name of Jesus. Come out, all spirits of of covetousness and jealousy and envy, come out now in Jesus' name. All spirits of idolatry and hatred, come out. All spirits of of, uh, judgmentalism, come out. Critical heart, come out now. All poverty that came in through satanic ritual abuse. All poverty that's come down through alcoholic personalities, alcoholic spirits, drug addicted spirits. Come out now in Jesus' name. All spirits of laziness and indolence, come out now in the name of Jesus. I break your power. Every spirit that is hindering their overcoming, come out now. All spirits of unbelief and doubt, lies and lying. Every spirit that tells them that God's not going to help them, that God's just like their mom and dad. Come out now, you lying spirits. Unbelief and doubt, come out now in Jesus' name. I break your power. All spirits of, of, uh, of, of sluggish spirits, sluggard spirits, come out in the name of Jesus. All spirits of manipulation, come out now in the name of Jesus. All spirits of, of uh, anger and bitterness and resentment, come out now in Jesus' name. All spirits of homosexuality, come out. All spirits of drug addiction, all spirits of sorcery, come out now in Jesus' name. All spirits of murder, come out in Jesus' name. I break your power in the mighty name of Jesus. And I declare that no demon is going to enter anybody in Jesus' name. I declare there will be no transference of evil spirits. All traffic is one way out where Jesus sends it. In Jesus' name, praise you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We exalt you, Lord. We say, Lord, there's no one like you. All spirits of swearing falsely, you come out now. In the name of Jesus, all spirits of talking, all spirits that would block them from work, all spirits that would hinder them from getting a job, I command in the name of Jesus, all spirits that came in through a lying tongue, all spirits of lying, come out now. All spirits of physical and and, uh, spiritual harlotry, spiritual adultery, come out now in Jesus' name. All spirits of an evil eye, I break your power, come out. All spirits of unrighteousness, Come out now in Jesus' name. Unholiness in Jesus' name. All spirits of covenant-breaking demons, come out now in Jesus' name. All spirits of hating people instead of loving people, you come out now in the name of Jesus. I I command all spirits that hinder the fear of the Lord, come out. All covenant demons that are breaking covenant, covenant covenant-breaking demons, you come out now in Jesus' name. I break your power. In the mighty name of Jesus, I command you to go now. In Jesus' name. All spirits of sowing sparingly, uh, sowing begrudgingly, not being a cheerful giver, come out. In Jesus' name. All spirits of poverty, uh, I command you to go in Jesus' name. All spirits of defeat, failure, depression, come out now in Jesus' name. All spirits of discouragement, despair, hopelessness, come out now in the name of Jesus. All spirits of 
of a, that came in through a cult involvement. All spirits that came in through having an occult object in your house. In Jesus' name. I want to say this. Bill Gothard tells a story, a true story, of a man who had a prosperous business. And uh, his business was just booming. He went someplace to a foreign country, bought back all these foreign icons, and he almost went broke. And then he went to a Bill Gothard seminar, and Bill Gothard taught against what you bring in your home. He said, if somebody else worships it, you're not to have it. And so... Um, Anyway, the man repented, him and his wife got rid of those things, burned those things, and his business began to prosper again. Uh, it, in Acts 19, 19, it says that when the, when the early church came and, and brought all their occult objects and burned them, their books and their occult things, it says the gospel spread. So, Lord, in the name of Jesus, forgive me for uh, what I brought in my house that does not honor you. Uh, Lord, I just pray that if I look at that and you tell me, and, and if you don't want me to have it, take away my peace. Lord, if I'm supposed to have it, increase my peace in the name of Jesus. <coughs> Lord, forgive me for usury. Forgive me for charging Brother Christian usury. Uh, God, forgive me for giving to the rich and oppressing the poor. Shutting my ears to the crowd of poor, Lord. I command all those demons to go. All pleasure-loving demons come out now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, all spirits of gluttony and alcoholism, drug addiction, come out in the name of Jesus. Uh, all spirits of negligence, incompetence, come out. Irresponsibility, come out. Empty pursuits, come out in the name of Jesus. All spirits of worthless endeavors, in Jesus' name, come out. In Jesus' name, I break your power. I break your power in the name of Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Foolishness, the spirit of a fool, come out in the name of Jesus. A lack of diligence, I command you to come. Every spirit that hinders diligence, come out now. Uh, all spirits that hinder perseverance, come out in Jesus' name. All spirits of fraud, illicit behavior, come out now in Jesus' name. Wickedness, you come out in the name of Jesus. Arrogance and pride, we break your power in the mighty name of Jesus. You come out now in Jesus' name. Wickedness, the spirit of wickedness, come out now in Jesus' name. Bless you, Lord. The spirit of theft, come out in the name of Jesus. You have to go. Praise you, Lord. Take a deep breath and blow out. The word spirit means pneuma. How do you say that? Pneuma. It means breath. Come out in Jesus' name. Let it go. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Every spirit that would not confess Jesus as Lord, you come out now in Jesus' name. Praise you, God. Praise you, God. When you feel a release, lift your hands with me and sing with me. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels fell before Him. Heaven and earth adore Him. What a mighty God we serve. Bless the Lord. Bless you, Lord. Come bless the Lord. All you servants of the Lord who stand by night in the house of the Lord, lift up your hands in a holy place. Come bless the Lord. Come bless the Lord. Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Lord, fill me with love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and self-control. From now on, look for answers in God's Word. Amen. Bless you. I love you all. Let me bless the food. Lord, we bless this food. We thank you for the food, the plentiful food we have here in America. We ask you to bless it, purify it, sanctify it. Thank you that you bless our bread and water. You set us our mouth with good things. And we thank you, Lord, that all the preservatives that's in all the food, that we can eat it and it will not even hurt us because your word says that. In Jesus' name. Amen. Bless you. And let me encourage you to come back, those of you who've just been here maybe one time, or even the ones who've been here many times. You've been here many times. Every time you go home, you'll be different. Amen. I can testify to that. I've been coming for 20 years almost. And every time I come, I go home different. So I thank the Lord for that. God bless you. And Lord, we pray that every person that goes home, drives home, will have, be saved. That you put angels all around us. In Jesus' name. Amen. This is the end of this message. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are hundreds of free audio files there.
It's like going to Bible school at home. Thank you.